I did want to get into what Mike Babcock had to say about Nazem Kadri mm-hmm. because we've been discussing this too, right? We knew there was going to be an adjustment because we knew that with the addition of John Tavares, he was just going to get notched down. There was even talk. We weren't even sure if he'd be on the number one power play unit just with the addition of Tavares. Of course, he does stay there, but... What's going on? He's had different wingers throughout the season already. He's not scoring at the rate that we know he can score at. Not the go-to guy or one even the top two when it comes to that power play. So offensively, he's struggling a little bit. And we're starting to see Mike Babcock use other lines as the shutdown line. The game against Boston and Colorado, he opted to go with the Tavares line. The best line against the other team's best line. Where that was normally Kadri's matchup. This is what Mike Babcock had to say about that. Well, last year uh, he played with Leo, and they were always in a kind of in a matchup role. Uh, this year he's not, and so he hasn't been in as much of a matchup role. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, when you look at our group, we need more from a, a number of guys, and, and he's one of those guys. Um, but he's an important player for us. He needs to be important, and needs to be feeling good about himself, and and playing the right way. Okay, so all I really gathered from that is once again Mike Babcock loving the Leo Komarov type of players, and basically saying that's. That's that grit that you're missing on that line, which is what he loves in a Zach Hyman. Like, it's almost like that's what he is is vying to get another piece of, to be another kind of Hyman who wants another kind of Komarov. However, that's where I feel like I'm once again going back to, and again, I don't want to put all this kind of pressure or expectation, and then this is going to be your savior in any way, shape, or form. But is Carl Grundstrom that type of player Mike Babcock likes and misses, and at what point would he get a chance? You know what? There's lots of Carl Grunstrom's out there. You better figure out a way to get your best offensive players going. Like, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of hearing about put your work boots on and feel good about yourself and, you know, do things the right way. The players are trying to do the things the right way. They're working their asses off, right? Coach's job is to put players in positions where they can excel and play to their potential and their capabilities, right? So, you know, I know something. Leo Komarov didn't help Nazem Kadri, okay, and to, to any great extent. Nazem Kadri helped himself. So I'm, I'm just so sick and tired of all this talk and everything. And Mike Babcock's starting to sound more and more like the Anaheim Ducks Mike Babcock, oh, you got to play greasy, you got to play this. The game has changed. It's about speed and skill and thinking and freeing up your players to play. Look what just happened to Man U. They fired their longtime coach. It was a joke. Mm-hmm. And look what's happened since that guy came in and freed him up. No, I, I hate to see I'm anyone. Putting, I'm, putting, I'm putting the spotlight right on Mike Babcock. That's exactly what I'm doing. I hate to see anyone lose their job, but in Jose Mourinho's case, I'll make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I will say this, and I love Leo Komarov. He's a tremendous guy. I think the fact that Nazem Kadri scored 30 goals last year, dragging that guy around in his line all year, is a remarkable accomplishment. Because Leo essentially was a boat anchor for most of the year. And and God bless him. but, but But you know what? Here's the thing. The Islanders love him. They do. You love him. That's okay. Yeah. But but he's not an offensive guy. And and no, he's not. But you can already see. I like I said, Mike Babcock. You just you what you see is what you get, and you know that he loves that kind of player on a line, and he's convinced that that's what opens up ice, opens up space for the offensive guys. Hence, what we're going to see tonight with Zach Hyman back on a line. I would bet with he can go, I bet they can go make a trade for Leo Komarov if they want to. <laughs> Probably. But here's the thing. Nazem Kadri has said as much. And you're right. If a coach, if, if he, if you, if you know your guy isn't feeling good and it's about kind of putting him in the right position to succeed, and I'm not saying you got to give in all the time to a player. Sometimes he's got to fight through adversity. But we know Nazem Kadri absolutely thrives when he's getting under the skin of the opposition and the opposition's best players. He has said it all the time. Pittsburgh's in town. He puts his hand up. I want to go up against the Crosby line. And I wonder if you just do that for him because, again, the last few games when you've had Tavares, that Tavares line, when you've had Matthews line going up against other top lines, it hasn't actually worked out. And I know what Jeff O'Neill said. How much is Tavares making? Like, if you're making... You want to get paid that kind of money, you better match up against the other team's top lines. But if Kadri does end up being the better answer, just do it. Why is your hand raised and you're smirking? I just wanted to make a point while you're on your beautiful rant there. Um, I have a question for you. How much ice time did Nazem Kadri average last year for Toronto? 16, 16 minutes. minutes. I was going to 16, say 16 minutes and 46 seconds. What's he averaging this year? 16 something. 16.46, the exact same amount. Um, his shooting percentage last year was 
This year it's eight. What's the difference between being on pace for a 30-goal year and, and a 15-goal year? Shooting 8% instead of 15%. Like, like at, at the end of the day, I, I don't see that Nazem Kadri is being held back. He's on pace for the same number of shots he had last year. He's, it's not held back. I'm just wondering like, situationally where he you're played with Leo Komarov last year. Like he scored 30 goals with Leo Komarov. I am, I am. Why my, are we arguing about Kadri's my, wingers? He had Leo Komarov on his wing all my, my point here too. And is, now I'm is, ripping is, on Leo Komarov. Yeah, no, no. But my point isn't about uh, somebody holding back. I'm saying a coach's job is to allow players to get into positions. I don't want to hear about feel good about yourself. I don't want to hear about put your work boots on. They put their work boots on every single day. That's why they are where they are. You know what? They do things the right way. Mistakes yeah. happen in a game. You mm-hmm. know what? Bill Belichick talks about we got to come up with schemes to free up players and everything. Scotty Bowman, he won. Why did he win? Because he put the best players in positions to excel yeah. and to succeed. I'm not suggesting Mike doesn't do that, but that's what a coach has to do.